Hey everyone, my name is Matt. Welcome to my shop and welcome to episode 13 of my Ask Matt series where I answer topics suggested by you, the viewer. Now today's topic comes from Michael Perkins. He sent me an email asking if I can go over just how like a jointer works and why a jointer is different than a planer specifically. So what a jointer does essentially, it has one job really and that is to make things flat, perfectly flat and not have any twist bow cup in those boards and that makes your whole process throughout the entire building process so much easier if you have boards that are nice and flat to begin with. So I have here a nice example board of something we can play with today. This is a piece of walnut and I'm pretty sure it has like every single form of warp in it. It's got a bow which is when the board is warped in this direction. It has a cup so it's warped in this direction as well and it looks like it's got a very small twist in it which is when it can rock from corner to corner. Now one common thing that I see out there a lot is people asking why you can't just send this through the planer and be done with it. Why do you need to, why do you need to run it over the jointer? Well the jointer makes things flat and the planer makes things perfectly parallel or consistent thickness. So if you want something that is a consistent thickness but is not flat then go ahead and run it through the planer. If you want something that has uh, two flat sides but not a consistent thickness, run both sides on the jointer. If you want a consistently thick board that is flat, run that board over the jointer and then feed it to the planer. So let's talk about why a planer is not the best thing for flattening a board. The main reason why a planer can't flatten a board is how it's designed. It has feed rollers in it and those feed rollers are designed to press that board down into the table inside the planer. And as that board is pushed down, it actually is going to just follow the curvature that exists in the board already. So for instance, if we're just talking about this board that has a bow in it, at every single point that is being planed, it is always going to be down, and then as you go through, that bow is going to stay there. You can see that it just kind of rides up all the time. It's not going to come out. It's going to have a bow on the other end of the planer as you feed it through, but it's going to be a little bit thinner. So let me show you that. Let me send this board through the planer, and we'll look at how that actually works, and if it actually cleans it up and makes it any flatter, which it might take a little bit of the the cup out of this but for the most part that bow and that twist is still going to be there. So here's what the inside of a planer looks like. You can see the infeed and outfeed rollers and it's their job to keep the board pressed down to the table and to feed the board through the cutter head in between them. Alright so now with the board runs through the planer we can look at how much of the distortion the planer is actually able to remove. And you can see that bow is still there. There's still this big gap in the middle here. It's probably about a sixteenth of an inch to an eighth of an inch in the middle there of bow. And there is still some twist here as well. So there is a little bit of twist. But most of the cup is gone. So a uh, cup is one thing you can kind of remove through the planer as long as you take light passes and your material is still pretty thick. The thinner you get, the more the board will actually flex as the rollers push down on it, which will just push the cup flat, plane it, and then when it comes off the rollers, the cup just comes back to being cupped again, because it just springs back up. So why is that? Why can't a planer not do this, but a jointer can make this totally flat? Well, it really comes down to those rollers again, and how everything is referenced. On a jointer, you're just riding these this board along these two tables which are in perfect coplanarity co I guess would be the word for it. They're coplanar, so coplanarity. I don't know if it's a real word, but we're going to go with it. <laughs> so they're coplanar, so they're actually at the pr exactly the same, um, they're in the same plane. So that means. <laughs> so those two tables are in exactly the same plane. So if you're to look at the two tables, that might be once the infeed table is set lower than the outfeed table, and that determines your cut depth, but they are totally in the same plane. So one isn't like this or like that or whatever. And that's what a lot of the setup time on these jointers is, is to get those tables perfectly calibrated that way. So once they're calibrated that way, all you're doing is referencing off of the points of the board that are touching the tables. And those points stay consistent through the entire cut as you're feeding it. So in this case, because it has a bow in it, as it's being fed through, just the high spots, or the low spots, depending on which way you look at it here, <laughs> just the two ends here are going to get cut by the cutter head, and then maybe as it gets to the middle, depending on the depth of the cut, the middle might not get cut at all. 
so another way to look at this is you can get exactly the same results as you could running a board through the planer on the jointer by using the jointer incorrectly. If I apply pressure, a lot of downward pressure throughout the entire cut, I'm going to flex this board down into the cutter head and what that's going to do is act exactly like those pressure rollers or the feed rollers in the planer. And that's going to flatten out the board as it goes through and as it comes off the cut, it's just going to spring back to the way it was before. So let's take a look at that real quick. Okay, so obviously I removed that cutter head guard for clarity, um, but you can still see that there is a pretty big gap there. That gap is still the same as it was before, and that's exactly what happens as it goes to the planer. As I was feeding this board through, I was putting a lot of pressure down on the board in the middle here. And that pushes the board down flat, but it doesn't stay flat because the board has the curvature in it and we're not taking it out. Now the proper way to use a jointer is to apply as little downward pressure as possible. You're only trying to keep pressure on the board to keep it on the table. You don't want to flex this board. So your pressure really needs to be a little bit downwards and mostly all directional across the table. So now let me just run through here and take this board over the jointer and I'll show you the right way to do it. I won't apply any pressure towards the middle. I'll have my push blocks towards the end here only holding it down and pushing it forward. And that's going to take this bow completely out. Okay, so you can see with proper usage or proper technique on the jointer, that bow it's totally gone and this board sits completely flat. So now I could run this board through my planer and I have a nice flat, perfectly consistent thickness board. Now another little feature of the jointer is this fence here. And that allows you to create another face on the board that is at an angle to another face that's already existing. So <laughs> that's a little, it sounds a little convoluted, but in reality, that's exactly what you're doing. So if you wanted to square up this edge of the board, you could rest this newly jointed face against the fence and ride the board over the, um, the table, over the cutter head, and that's going to flatten the edge of the board, well, the edge of the board down here, and that is going to be at an angle to the first one, which in most cases is going to be 90 degrees, because that's usually what these fences are set to, just to square up lumber. So. Uh, I only say it because at an angle because it's hard to get anything to be exactly 90 degrees. There's always some amount of error and you could also tilt the fence to, um, to be at an angle, any angle you want. So most of the time though it's going to be squaring up an edge to a face. So let me show you the edge being jointed as well. So now I can run this board through my planer and have a nice consistent thickness board because that planer is going to reference off the bottom surface here and make the top surface parallel to it. And then for the other edge, I can run my jointed edge along the fence of my table saw and get a nice consistently, consistent width board out of that. So that's cool and all. I mean, having flat lumber is certainly something that seems like it would be useful, but I'm sure you're asking yourself, well, Matt, who cares? <laughs> Why does your lumber need to be square, flat, and all nice and pretty and whatever. Well, the answer to that is uh, your enjoyment level, I think, in the shop. If you can get a board that is nice and flat, true, and square like this, well, like this will be, it makes your life a whole lot easier. You can get a lot more consistent and better results in your entire process through your entire furniture building experience. So this step here is the first step in the entire building process. It sets the foundation for everything that comes later on. All of your joinery is going to be basically based on what you can do here at the jointer. And that's why this tool is the most valuable tool in my shop because it is the 
first stop for every single piece of material that comes through the door. And if I can get it nicely milled here, it saves me so much hassle down the road in the project. So let me show you an example of gluing up a panel. I'm sure a lot of people have glued up panels before out of boards, but if you've never glued up a panel with a board that is perfectly milled, you don't know what you're missing. It's so much simpler. So I'm gonna get a couple of boards. I'm just gonna run them through the planer so that they have some deformity to them. And I'm gonna have a couple boards that I will be jointing and planing flat and gluing those up as well. So you can take a look at the drastic difference in the experience and the quality of the results. So let's do that. All right, so for our little gloop example here, let me start with my two boards that just ran through the planer. Now I can already tell that they are not, uh, they're not gonna behave so well for this glue up because this one here has a bow in it a little bit. So that's gonna be interesting. So let's get some glue on here and we'll see what happens. And then I'll just apply a little bit of pressure here with the clamps. Okay, so on this glue up here so far, I have this side is nice and flush over here, but over here, this board here actually kind of goes up like this and they're not flush over here. So in this case, this is where you're gonna see a lot of people grab some, some clamps and they're gonna try and clamp down the two edges of the board. But all that's doing is putting a twist into my panel and lifting it out of this side of the clamp. Now another thing that you might try or works really well are some calls. So you might take some calls and maybe try and clamp those um, across the boards like that over the entire width of the board to help keep those things flat. And that'll help as well. So if your glue-ups are a lot like that, chances are you're not using boards that are nice and milled nice and flat and square. So let me just take this apart. I don't really care about this panel, so I don't need it to be glued together. Now these boards are nice and flat. In the clamps already, they're sitting here. No clamping pressure, they're nice and flush already. So let me go ahead and apply a little bit of glue to these. And this is actually a panel that I'll be using in one of my projects too, so I'll actually glue this together for real. I'll start by bringing in this middle clamp. I'm just gonna keep them down to the clamps as I tighten up just a little bit, just so I see a little bit of squeeze out come over here. And over here, the, the two ends, they're still flush, that's good. So I'll bring in the next one here, keep them down to the clamps, and I'll watch for the squeeze out. Here it comes. Just a little bit of squeeze out there, that's all I need. And then down here as well. Keep these flush to the clamps. There we go. And this is, <laughs> that's flush all the way across and I don't have to clamp the ends, I don't have to put any calls on it. This panel is nice and flat. This should be a straight edge, I think. That's flat. So, nice flat panels, really easy with properly milled stock. And that all starts with their ability to flatten things before running them through the planer. Now I know not everybody has a jointer, so there's a lot of different ways to achieve this exact same result if you only have a planer. And that was the other half of Michael's question. And a lot of people have the same question is, should I buy a jointer first or should I buy a planer first? Well, I say if you really can only buy one, buy the planer first because there are ways to flatten boards besides using the jointer. The jointer is just the most efficient and quickest way to do it. Now there's a few different ways you can go about flattening those boards. If you're good with a hand plane, you can just hand plane the one side of a rough board, get that board sitting nice and flat on your bench or on a flat reference surface, and then you can run it through your planer just the same as you would with your jointer. You could also use a router sled. I did a video about using a router sled that you can check out as well. It makes it really easy to flatten boards with your router. Now another way you can go is create a little sled for your planer, and that allows you to support that board as the feed rollers are feeding it through the planer, which keeps the rollers from being able to press that board flush or flat down to the table inside the planer and that works really well. My buddy Matthew Morris had a great video about making and using one of those um, planer sleds. I guess they're planer sleds, planer jig sleds, planer flattening sled jig thingies. <laughs> I'll have a link to his video in the description as well. So I hope you guys found this useful. I hope you learned a little bit about um, how the jointer works and how it's really 
a very helpful tool to have in the shop. If you have any questions or comments about anything I talked about today, or if you have a future Ask Matt suggestion, please feel free to leave those in the comments below, or feel free to send me an email. So thank you as always for watching, and until next time, happy woodworking.